listen to 10,000 motivating, motivating speakers out there. You could have everything you want. Do people know what they want? I, I, I repeat this once or twice already, but some people say, well, if you're going to ask God for anything, always ask for 100 times more, 10 times more, at least if you get 1%, you'll be happy. Well, ask for $10 million because you want one? Does that make any sense? It's still not right. God, if you believe in God, spirit, uh, I don't believe the idea of a universe being a creator, but uh, whatever it is that you do believe in, what does it give you? What you think you want or what you need? Nobody wants pain and suffering. Nobody wants to go through the hard times. They're the only things that help us grow. Because if you lived in bliss land, there's nothing to think about, nothing to worry about, and you just stay happy. Happy is an emotion of the mind controlled by the, the parts of the body, the five senses of the body. Smell, taste, feeling, uh, all those kind of aspects of the body. So when you're happy, what happens? Oh, your, your body starts shaking, starts smiling. It's physical aspects. What happens to light? Light can shine, whether it's happy, sad, or whatever, because it just is that. When you turn on a flashlight, it's a bright light. If, it's a, if the battery is powerful, the battery is dead, it's a weak light. Depending on how strong you create your energy within yourself is how much you're going to shine wherever you go. So if you're going to go out into the world, you want to be a light. You don't want to be a shadow in the darkness. So at that point, we each go home, get up the next morning every day. It's, it's a pattern. But try getting up in the morning a little early, look in the mirror and say, Say what you want to yourself. Talk to yourself. You don't need to talk to the world because the world's not listening, but you are. And even if you write something down to yourself, I want to do this today, I want to plan on doing this, it opens you up to thinking a little more because you could talk all you want and it goes in and out your ears and then you forget about it. And, I, and I'm one of those people, and I hate writing myself, but I write notes, I write my things that I want to talk about every day. I write 10, 50 pages never get to them, but I still write it to stay focused on what I'm trying like here in the neighborhood I live in. Uh, so we have to do that for ourselves. Look in the mirror. Say, who am I? What's good about me? What am I going to do today? What can I do to make today a little bit better? So they're just the starting point of stepping out of the box and looking at yourself. Open your eyes when you go outside. What do you notice? What do you see? What's happening around you? Is it good? Is it positive? Are the people the right kind of people you want to be around? I'm sorry about my dog. My, my neighborhood's getting crazy right now. It's the middle of the day, hot here. Uh, hold on a second. Let me just close this door for a second. whether it's the gopi frogs, people screaming and yelling. Uh, there's always different things here to deal with. But uh, I just got a message. Hold on. I didn't get it. So, okay, when we start planning our day, we start planning our life. You want a partner, you want a relationship, you want, what do you want in your life? What do you want to do to go get it? Want a better job? I'm not saying that what's, that's not what life is about, but if you want a better job, you have to work to get that too. Everything requires work. And in the weightlifting field, it's no pain, no gain. And that is so true. You're not going to get muscle mass by somebody giving it to you or telling you you have muscles. All those things, you work for it. Uh, our experiences help us grow if we're aware of them and we need them but you have to have the gateway inside yourself open for it to come through because spirit gives us truth all the time no matter what we're doing it comes through and it, and it affects us but if we listen or not it's a different story uh, I'm not going to go into the things I always talk about like how to determine when spirit talks to you or your mind talks to you but there are things you need to know so when you set up your goals, I want to be rich. I want to be. Does it have anything to do with the word spiritual in it? I want to be spiritual. 
And what's that mean to you? Not the programmed idea, what people say, well, I'm spiritual. And I haven't met one person yet that could answer that. I mean, and say, well, I'm spiritual because... I'm spiritual because I'm spiritual? Uh, somebody just asked me about my dog, Gizmo. Yes, it is, Mr. Gizmo. He did something, and I'm still thankful to Spirit for that. A crystal fell on the floor, and he ate the crystal. It was a glass crystal. He chomped it down to pieces. I mean, I had to watch him for days to make sure that nothing was happening to him. Somehow he passed it. I don't know if he ground it into powder, which he had to, but everything's okay. Uh, but it was so scary. I mean, I'm learning about just having a pet as a, a dog, as a pet. An incredible experience, which I never had all my life. So when, when you're looking for love, you'll never find it where you think you're going to find it. You can get a parakeet. You can get anything, a fish in a fish tank. And you might be amazed what comes out of that. But uh, let's stick with what am I doing to get out of the box I live in. How am I going to open my eyes? Well, we've got to go into so many things. Uh, I'm going to go through as much as I can uh, today to get through it. Uh, I'm working with TJ. We're talking about a conference, talking about doing a spiritual conference, not a UFO conference. Janet is doing Stargate to the Cosmos. It's coming up in a couple months. Uh, I wasn't invited. There's reasons, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't go to it. But TJ is probably going to it. And it's got those speakers out there that I don't deal with anymore. I don't want to deal with. I'm not here to promote fear, even though it might sound that way. Uh, and here's what I'll say straight up before we get into the word, even that. There's only one fear that you should have in your life. The fear of God. Not the fear of life, not the fear of disease, sickness, cars, planes, or any of that. Because any of that can hit you in a second. It could come from anywhere. But it's usually influenced by something else. Your karma. And that's being kept wrecked by things. So uh, that's where I would keep my focus on. Knowing that God watches you. Uh, not going to the bathroom. Eating what you're eating. Do you think God in itself would really be pushed in a spot where it would care about those things? Or needs to? And there's billions of planets and universes, and, and you would have to worry about that. It would have to worry about that. I doubt it. So we'll go back to ourselves, finding who and what we are. When we look in the mirror, we say, okay, we're something. If you build on that energy, when you go out into the world, we all have auras. And I talked about reading auras, and that's something people should learn how to do. When you read a person's aura, you don't have to ask them a question. You just have to look them in the eyes. I mean, sometimes you don't. If you're really good at it, you don't have to look them in the eyes. But it's so much easier if you do. Because if somebody lets you look into their eyes, it's like a doorway to inside them. And then it's easy to read their energy and see it. But uh, you need to create what you feel is right around yourself. If not, you're going to put yourself right back in a box. I mean, if you could do something inside the box, that's a different story. I mean, I do my shows from inside my room. And I don't go out much, but I have to do this. I have to get prepared. I have to work on things. So, yeah, I'm doing a lot inside the box that I need and know and I want to do. And if I was forced to stay in the box, I wouldn't stay here, period. I walk to the ocean twice a day. So I take Mr. Gizmo, my little dog, and walk down to the ocean. Uh, so, yeah, there's things that... Give me that freedom when I need it. Just looking at the ocean is tranquil or incredible. Uh, I, I, I'm on a cliff, so I really can't get in the water every day. But I go close to the rocks, and then the waves, they're giant waves. So when I hit the rocks, they splatter up, and I can get sprayed with the water anyway. And just that is stimulating. So we got lots of things in our way and lots of things that can help us move forward. I'm not saying you need pain. I'm on all rocks. This is, a, this is a rock made out of lava. We don't really have sand beaches and things like that. There are a couple sections where there are. 
But right where I go down to the ocean, it's just lava. It looks like the moon burst open and all cut up and caves and all kinds of stuff. But it's all rock. I mean, I do walk there, but it doesn't bother me. My my little dog, I worry about him, especially when it heats up and everything during the day. But uh, we have to think about the problems that they force on us. Sickness, crime, drinking and drugs. The more they tell us about them, the more it puts the attention inside a person's brain. Programming, it's simple. You hear something over and over, it becomes part of your thinking. So do you understand anything about uh, angels, ghosts, spirits, deities, death, and life after death? Well, they're critical. You're going to have, I always use the word, a date and time. You have 125 years on this planet to do, become, to learn, and to get ready to leave. And in most cases, you're not going to make it that far. You might make it to 60, 80, 90. Few people make it to the 100. Few people make it over that. Few. So, cut your time, take 25 years off your time right from the start, and leave it at 100. Well, when you get to 75, your body starts changing. When you get to 80, you start getting a little bit senile, tired and and all those other things if you're in perfect health that's a little bit different you can still do the same things you can do well that's great but now your children are old now you might see your children die you might see family around you all dying so old age is not what it's cracked out to be and it was that way for a reason uh It gives a a bad person or a good person more time to do whatever they think they're going to do in this lifetime to change the reality. And in in most cases, look at the reality that we're living in. Contaminated food. Contaminated air. Contaminated water. So, what we eat is changing the way we feel subconsciously. They brainwash us into sugar so bad, salt so bad, synthetic sugars are are better, chemicals, all the vitamins and medicines they give you. How many truly are beneficial to help us become better in any way? Well, one out of a thousand medicines they make do help us. They got the cure for hepatitis C. The only thing sad about it is they charge $70,000 for the treatment but three months of pills 90 pills is $70,000 do you think something's wrong there? oh they got to pay for the research well well, who's paying for the research on aliens and ships and everything else that's out there Uh, we all are so but when it comes to a medicine that's really going to heal somebody well I guess they base it on if they heal everybody they won't have them as a patient so if they're going to get that treatment they got to make sure they pay a real lot for it which is pathetic in our society. But as human beings, which we are, why is it? We're not fighting over the things we should be. Because you, every day you hear what the problem is and what you should be concerned about, which has nothing to do with spirit. People. It's more about people, the physical person, than the spiritual part of the person. I mean, if a person's a criminal... Oh, we got to make sure that he doesn't get sentenced forever or he doesn't get life, life imprisonment and all. Why? I mean, we're more concerned about the body than the soul of the person. When you kill somebody, their soul is freed. The way they kill the witches, I, I, I was a witch. I, I was in that time frame as well. I went through that. When, it, when they went to persecute a witch and she went to trial, she had the choice to say she was a witch Or deny it. And they would torture her to make her say she was. But if she did admit she was a witch, she was killed. So, you know, it was a two-sided sword. You're going to get stabbed with it either way. And we're in a society where no matter what you think, no matter how you go about doing it, you're still in the same place. So, looking at a world 
of what we're living in right now.